Welcome to the VHDL Design and Modeling of Digital Systems course, State Machines. State Machines, or Finite State Machines. The Finite State Machine, or FSM, is defined as a machine whose next state is a function of both the present state and inputs. When we apply the two-process method, uh, a combinatorial process is used to determine the next state from the present state and inputs. And a sequential process whose input is the next state and whose output is the present state. So that when a clock edge happens, we switch from one state to the next. Here's an example of a basic state machine. Um, first we have the entity, which has two inputs, uh, clock and FSM, as in finite state machine input. Uh, the architecture statement, which is associated with the entity. And then we have uh, a type for the state machine. We have type state is state 0, state 1, and state 2. So that shows that our state machine has three states. Uh, next we have uh, two signal definitions. The first is present state uh, of type state and it's pre-initialized to state 0. And we also have next state which is also of data type state. We now have the uh, beginning of the body of the architecture. Uh, here we have the first process, it's the sequential process, which has a sensitivity list of one signal, namely clock, and begin if rising edge then present state is assigned with the contents of next state. Here's the combinatorial process of our state machine. The process basically has two signals in the sensitivity list. These are the only two signals that are being read by the process. FSM input and present state. Uh, you notice the first thing I do is a default state assignment. I assign next state is assigned with whatever the value of present state is. The reason I do this is to make sure that regardless of what happens that next state will always get assigned something. So we don't accidentally create some sort of uh, latch condition. Um, then we do a case on present state and if we're in state 0 and F FSM input is 1, the next state is assigned to state 1. Else next state is assigned state 0. Now some of these are redundant. You'll notice that uh, if we're in 0, we'll stay in 0. and that part of the code actually could have been left out, but that's sh it's shown here for the sake of completeness. Um, one thing I want to point out about this example as well is that while it does show uh, the basic structure of a state machine, it's uh, somewhat fruitless because it has two inputs and no outputs. So next we'll look into uh, outputs of a state machine. Two types of state machines we're going to look at are the Mealy and the Moore state machines. Uh, Mealy state machine outputs are a function of current state and inputs, and Moore state machines outputs are strictly a function of the current state. The outputs of a Moore state machine are a function of the present state only. We can easily do this by using a dedicated combinatorial process whose input is that of the present state and whose output is the present outputs. If we wanted to register the output signals of a Moore state machine, we could use the same combinatorial process as described before. Uh, to feed the next portion of the uh, sequential process. Uh, 
only the combinatorial process would use the next state output for of the next combinatorial pro state process. Here's an example of a no, of a more state machine. Uh, entity statement clock and FSM inputs and the output is defined as more output uh, of type bit. Now in the declarative start part portion of the architecture uh, we have the same thing as we had before which is the state definition, data type defi definition and the present state and next state uh, signal uh, statements and also we've added a one more which is the next more output as type bit. The sequential process uh, assigns present state to whatever is in next state and also we assign more output to what uh, was assigned to next more output. This means that the more output is registered. This is the same combinatorial process we had before which is calculating the next state which is a function of FSM input and present state. There's one more combinatorial process called more process and its only input is the value of next state. Now the first thing we do is we assign the next more output to a value, uh, in this case zero, and then we have a case statement on next state. So if the next state is zero, then our m next more output will be zero. If our next state is state one, then our next more output is one. And if our next, if our, uh, next state is state 2, then our next more state is value 1. For a mealy state machine, the output is a function of the current state and inputs. Since the next state combinatorial process is also a function of the next state and inputs, we can just add the output of a mealy state machine uh, signal assignments within the same process. Additionally, if we wanted to register the Mealy uh, FSM or state machine outputs, we could simply add, simply have a next Mealy output signal like we have for the next state. Here's an example of a state machine using a Mealy, a uh, Mealy output. Um, same basic entity statement as before, except here we have Mealy output as defined as uh, of type bit. We also have uh, the state definition, data types definitions, uh, the present state and next state uh, definitions, and also the uh, next Mealy output definition. The sequential process does as it does in the other examples, which is just assign present state to uh, next state and mealy output is assigned with the value that's in next mealy output. Here we're basically combining uh, the assignments of both the next state and the next mealy output since both are a function of the current state or present state and the FSM input. So, it, unlike the more output, it does not require a separate process. As you can see, the first thing I do is assign the default values. Uh, next state is assigned to present state, and next to mealy output is assigned zero. Those defaults are there, so make sure that regardless of what happens throughout the execution path, each one of those signals receives at least one signal assignment. We do this so we avoid the possibility of uh, creating a, an, an unintentional latch. 
um, when present state is state 0, then we check to see if SF, FSM input is 1. If it is, we assign next state to state 1, and we assign next melee output to 1. Otherwise, we change next state to 0. Now, notice that there isn't a uh, next melee output assignment made, but remember that um, we have a default assignment already in place, and we also the rest of the case statement is for the case one, and uh, are for uh, state one and state two, for the signal assignments of uh, next state and next melee output. A special type of finite state machine is one that doesn't have an input as part of its next state. Uh, combinatorial process. Such state machines are sometimes called sequencers. Uh, sequencers can be basic counters, gray code counters, waveform generators, etc. Uh, one note on output ports. Since ports can be defined within an entity declaration as outputs, uh, they cannot be read. Uh, it is sometimes helpful to define an internal version of those signals. The internal signals can be read or written to by the architecture. The output port would then be assigned using a concurrent statement, a signal assignment statement. Here's an example of what we might do with uh, an output that we want to be able to read. The output is called count, and in the uh, architecture declaration uh, portion, uh, we have a signal assignment or a signal definition for internal count, and we pre-initialize that to zero. Um, you'll see that the sequential process, when on a, on a rising edge, uh, basically counts and if the internal count is 9, then we initialize the 0. Otherwise, we increment the internal count. Now, to be able to increment the counter, we have to be able to read it. So we have internal count. We're able to read it. We're able to write it. And after the uh, sequential process, I have highlighted here a concurrent signal assignment where count is assigned from internal count. 